Hey guys, Luke here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about doing the Kia Stinger lease buyout. So um, if you're familiar with this, it's probably why you've clicked on this video. Uh, it can be a little bit convoluted online if you're searching around uh, or if you're new to car buying in general or, you know, doing a lease and then a buyout. It's not really a uh, common thing. Um, but I do a lot of talking about leasing on my channel earlier. So if you want to check that out, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, uh, moving on to buying out a Stinger when you lease it. The Stinger doesn't really have the greatest money factor or residual value. Um, you know, so that's not the focus of doing the lease buyout. Your focus on a lease buyout is the adjusted cap cost. And what the adjusted cap cost is, is actually the selling price or the price of the vehicle after all the rebates and discounts. So that would just be if you were normally buying a car, what the dealership would be selling it to you for. However, in a lease, it's what your payment is calculated off of. So you take all the rebates, discounts, and you get that adjusted cap cost. Then you factor in the money factor and the residual value to calculate your monthly payment. In this case though, we're not going on the payment. So what I'm gonna to try to do is break this video down in a, in a couple sections. Depending on how long I talk or how detailed I get, it might be two videos. Either way, check the description for some timelines if you just wanna skip uh, to the next part. So first off, part one, to do this, you've gotta have good credit, guys. Um, I'm just not gonna sugarcoat it. Uh, to get a lease, you gotta have decent credit. Um, now since in this case, the money factor and the residual is not really going to matter that much or the payment you don't have to have the best credit in the world but you just have to have decent credit i would probably say a 680 or above um, and good history so what that means is you've purchased cars before you've made plenty of payments on cars before and you don't have any um, buybacks or repos um, or missed payments in your car history now if they were a really long time ago you might be able to get away with it However, know that going into this, you gotta have at least some decent credit. I would say 680 or above. Part two is do your research. Now, what I mean by that is there's a lot of things. You need to know what price you should be looking for. Um, you also need to know kind of an idea on the money factor and the residual, just so you know what it should be and if the dealer is trying to mess around with you from the get-go. Uh, so that's just more ammunition. Again, it's not really going to come down to that 100%, but it's just good for you to know what it is. Uh, and most importantly, the rebates. So uh, the rebates vary from the year, uh, whether it's a GT1, GT2, or regular GT, uh, rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, uh, the months that you're doing the lease for, whether it's 24 months or 36 months. So all those things play uh, a big factor in the rebates. So how you find that out and how I found it out is uh, actually Edmonds is going to be a big part of this, this whole thing. And Edmonds has a uh, forum that you can basically Google and you'll end up finding the, uh, not the actual forum, but it's just kind of like a shortened version online. I'm going to put that link in the description below and I'm going to put a little link at the bottom right here to kind of tell you which one I'm talking about because there's going to be a couple. So basically there's a, a forum where you can just post, hey, I'm looking for a Kia Stinger GT2 rear wheel drive. Here's my zip code. You gotta make sure you put your zip code because that differentiates everything too. And I wanna do uh, the one with the most rebates, you know, or for other people, if you're just looking to lease a Kia Stinger and actually lease it, uh, say, what's the money factor, residual, and the rebates on a 2019 GT2 Stinger rear wheel drive. You've gotta make sure you get all those things in there. Hey, there's another Stinger. Don't really see them too much. It was just a premium, not that there's anything wrong with that. Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna go to the link there and just make a post. You know, you might have to log in or register, but make a post in this form. I'll put it up on the screen here too so you get an idea of what it actually looks like. And uh, they'll, uh, usually they're pretty good there within at least a day or 24 hours, they'll respond back with what the current rebates, money factor or residual is uh, in your zip code. So that's the first thing, so figure out that. And, uh, you know, a lot of this, if you're going to be ready to purchase, has to be done within 30 days for it to be valid or for your research to still be valid. So the second thing you want to do is find out what the average 
discount off MSRP is. Now, um, the discount off MSRP that I found a good starting price for 2019, uh, being that it's 2020 and I got a leftover 19, is anywhere from you know five to seven thousand uh, dollars, depending on the model. So of course I went for the top trim GT2, which is going to have the most markup and obviously the most discount that you can get. So that might vary for what you're looking at, but there's a way to tell. So you don't go into the dealer just thinking you're going to get this magical, you know, ten thousand dollars off sticker price, um, you know, before rebates. So what you can do again is Edmonds. And basically there's a site on Edmonds that lets you build your uh, car that you're looking for. Uh, of course, being new, you'd have all the options. You can put in all the options there and uh, the trim, you know, the rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, whatever it may be. And what it does is not only does it give you what the MSRP should be, it gives you the invoice price. So the invoice price is kind of like a good starting point for buying cars. Um, you know, a lot of dealers sell cars at invoice. Uh, they might they base their pricing scheme slightly above or below invoice pricing usually. Um, now in my experience, which I'm gonna get into in a little bit, some dealerships use bump stickers, which is a thing you have to watch out for and I'll tell you how to do that coming up in another chapter. <laughs> um, so anyway, and I can verify that this invoice price is actually true because if you've watched me or watched my other videos, um, I used to work at a dealership and I actually, when I found out about this, went and tested it out and it's actually spot on. So I was able to pull up the invoices on my Dodge vehicles and I typed in the build on their website and it's spot on. And for whatever reason, if it's not spot on, it's damn well close enough. Uh, so anyway, what I, from what I've found out, it's a very useful resource, again, just to give you ammunition. Um, so, and then also what it tells you in that same section, and I'm gonna leave these links there, put one below and down in the description, it gives you the price of what most people are kind of paying for them. So that's, uh, you know, the average of, you know, based on your zip code, what people have been getting the, the pricing for. And I don't know if that's really true or, you know, if, if a lot of that data gets back to the company. Um, but from what I've found on the forums, uh, that number does coincide pretty good. So what I did is I basically took the Edmonds number and kind of rounded down and that's where I kind of started my negotiation. So, and I think it ended up being about five, uh, about $5,000 off on a GT119 off of sticker. Now remember, you're going to get those rebates on top of the MSRP discount. So that's what I found out and coincided with what I found out on the forums, which I highly recommend going to the Kia Stinger forums and just look through what other people are getting off of MSRP when you are ready to purchase. So you can look back at, just make sure you're not looking at an old thread from two years ago. You know, look at a current thread and if you really don't find anything, use the search function. And if you don't find anything, just ask a question. You might have to sign up for the forums, post a question. Hey guys, what are you, you know, getting off of sticker price off of a 2019 leftover Kia Stinger GT2, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, GT1, whatever it may be, and just wait for some answers. You know, that's the best thing you can do is that's the real world unfiltered, you know, explanation is this is what we've really got. So anyway, I highly recommend doing that, going to Edmonds, you know, comparing those prices there. That way, if your car slightly varies in features than the one that you've found on the forums, that way you know, okay, well, this doesn't have remote start or it doesn't have uh, the 360 camera or, you know, doesn't have some certain feature, you can kind of subtract that from your negotiation. So uh, anyway, moving on to the next part. Okay, so you've got your research, you know what you're looking for. What you wanna do is find your stinger. So now that you're armed with all the knowledge of what you should be paying, find a car that you like, you know, whether it's on Auto Trader, you go to your local dealer, whatever it may be, you're probably gonna be searching online. And what you wanna look for online is, uh, if you're on Auto Trader, you don't get to see the whole picture um, or cars.com or any third party site, car gurus, uh, about the pricing of the car. So I would not shop by the price of the car. Just don't do it because it just doesn't make, it just doesn't matter. Because they could they could be using a bump sticker, which is where they bump the price of the MSRP. 
uh, showing you a big discount and uh, some of those discounts can include rebates that you don't qualify for okay they're not in my lane some of those discounts uh, can include rebates that you don't qualify for so anyway I would not go by the price I would just find the car that you like and work from there once you find a car that you like go to the dealers website and do your research there so what I mean by that is go to the website find uh, the car that you like on their website and see if there's a window sticker link the where you can actually find the window sticker um, that and that is gonna pull up not their their own little thing when you click on the the link it should bring you up just a PDF document of the window sticker and it should have um, the Kia I'll put the link down in the description for you but it should have something directly from Kia Motors not from their website um, so that way they can't fudge it why you're doing this is to make sure they're not using a bump sticker to give you a discount and you know the actual MSRP of the car that you're looking for because that's what your discount is going to be based off of and the end all adjusted cap cost because for example if uh, they're showing you seven thousand dollars off sticker you're like oh that's great and but the sticker is the MSRP is actually uh, fifty thousand but on their website they're putting MSRP as 55,000 well they're adding five thousand dollars to the sticker price but giving you a seven thousand dollar discount which in reality is only a two thousand dollar discount because they bumped the car five thousand dollars so that's what you want to be careful of and I found many dealers that did that even in my search and in my experience with uh, the car world in general so how you know that is well you find the window sticker now let's say you found a car that you like and you don't see the window sticker they pretty much have to put the VIN number of the car as far as I can see most sites are gonna have the VIN number on the description so you got to kind of peek around and look around to see where the VIN number is sometimes if you don't see it right there on the main page it's in the link description uh, so I think these VIN numbers start with like KN you know and it's like 17 numbers so you can look up in the link or, you know the website and actually get the VIN right from there and what you do with that is you can paste that VIN at the end of another website the Kia website that has the uh, window stickers on it and I'll leave that link in the description if you cannot find a window sticker link on their uh, dealer page get the VIN number copy it control C on a computer push and hold you know over the text on an Android or iPhone to copy it and then go get this link and paste the VIN number where the VIN number is in my link so I'm just gonna put up the link to my VIN uh, or my window sticker and basically you can just paste your VIN over that hit the enter button and it's gonna bring up the window sticker for that particular vehicle that way you know exactly what the MSRP is big thing to look out for after you've done that another another thing you want to do is look for any kind of fees that the dealer is going to charge so 99% of dealers out there have some kind of dealer fee uh, I was fortunate enough to work for a dealer that, that did not um, but at least you know this going in and when they're giving you prices how they are getting to your price where you're going to usually find stuff like that is uh, at the very bottom of the page in the fine print so a lot of times you'll have to go to the actual uh, page of your car and that is uh, at the very bottom when you scroll down you're gonna see a bunch of fine print and usually if you read through that fine print you're gonna see things like you may not qualify for this rebate you might not qualify for these offers or these prices include financing assist of a thousand dollars and trade-in assist of a thousand dollars well those are all things that you have to look for because it's gonna determine your price at the end in there you should also find oh well there's a 699 dealer fee there's a 399 document fee um, a lot of that stuff can add up really quick that's why I say don't shop by price because I've seen some of those fees add up to almost twenty five hundred dollars and that's before the addendum and the addendum are the add-ons that a lot of people do uh, you know window tint and wheel locks and auto armor and paint protection and all that stuff twenty five hundred dollars in fees so when you think you see this Kia Stinger brand new GT2 you're like wow this one's 
way cheaper than all the other ones. I'm going to go to that guy. Well, yeah, well, that quickly gets turned around whenever they give you the final numbers and you've got all those fees on there. So that's just going to save you a lot of time in negotiation and a lot of time in researching because you know that that's not really the price when you find out, hey, they've got all these fees on there. So make sure you scroll to the bottom of every dealer page that you find a car on, look for their fees, look for trade assist, look for financing assist, look for document fees. And then once you actually contact a dealer, because usually they don't put the addendums online, you wanna find out what their addendums are. So you can basically say, hey, do you guys have any uh, window tint or wheel locks or you know a uh, basically add-ons uh, that you add into the price whenever you purchase the car so that's what you want to know before you actually contact the dealer and uh, start negotiating a price okay guys so now that you have an idea about what you should be paying for the Kia Stinger and you've found your Kia Stinger and you have uh, got an idea about the dealer fees that the dealer is going to try to impose on you uh, and any kind of uh, rebates that you might not qualify for. Um, either way, you know it's the car you want. You want to contact a dealer and see what kind of price discounts they're going to give you. So what I would recommend is either calling in. Um, I just shoot an email because you might have a half a dozen that you're trying for. You might have even more. So I start with an email just to see who I get a hold of and if they're, uh, you know, I don't know. How to put this but you know if they're swift enough to kind of keep up with what you're trying to do because um, some of the people out there just either a have no idea what they're doing or b they hit you with the typical salesman stuff you know trying to get you to come in and oh well, we can't value your trade over the phone and blah blah blah, blah or via email um, you know and actually uh, which brings me to a good point um, about your trade-in a lot of people are going to have a trade-in if you have a trade-in and you want help negotiating your trade-in or how I would find out about your trade-in and what it's worth. I have another video on that, and it's right there. You can probably click that link up there uh, with a lot of other car, good car buying advice. So anyway, um, when you start to negotiate, what, what the first thing that I started with was, what's the MSRP discount that you're going to give me? So now you've already found out that they don't use a bump sticker or they do use a bump sticker. Um, and you've done your research on the Edmonds page to find out what a lot of other people are getting uh, for there or what discounts they're getting for the trim level and everything that you're looking for, you should have an idea about what you can negotiate off of the sticker price of this car. Now this is before rebates, so this is just the discount off MSRP. And this might be hard to get out of some people, but you've just gotta stick with it because a lot of people are payment buyers, a lot of people want um, a final number um, but the thing is why you're only asking for that what the discount off MSRP is Is because by now you should know what the rebates are going to be so you have that in the back of your mind You know what rebates you're going to get doesn't matter what they say they have to follow the rebates You just want to know what kind of discount you're going to get off of MSRP and the reason why I'm stressing that so much is because if they just give you a, uh, a price of the vehicle well, you don't know how much of that is their actual discount and how much are their rebates. So they can they can just say, well, because, you know, I got $11,920 with rebates. That's a heck of a discount. So they might just be like, oh, yeah, well, there's $11,900 in rebates. So here's your here's the price of the car. So they're going to take MSRP minus your rebates. Well, that's BS. You get a discount off of MSRP and the rebates. Keep that in mind. So that's why I'm stressing this this much. So. What I did was just say, hey guys, I'm really interested in the Stinger. Um, I'm gonna be leasing it, so I'm really looking for an adjusted cap cost. How much discount off of MSRP are you going to give me? They might get all discombobulated about this, but you've gotta keep on it. And if you get a salesperson or an internet sales guy or whatever that just doesn't know what they're doing or they want you to come in or whatever, just keep saying, hey man, look, I'm this far away, I'm this far away. I, you might not be. I only had one Kia dealer in my in my area. If you've got six within a five mile radius, well, by all means, go ahead and go down there and uh, do all this stuff in, in person if you really want to. Um, but I prefer to just keep it online because they're just gonna waste your time and try to buy the car when you get there and confuse you more and you don't have time to really do a backwards comparison and more research on the prices that you're giving uh, or that, that you're getting. So I would just say, hey, what's the discount off MSRP? Just keep pounding them about it. If you can't get through to anybody, 
just call in and ask for somebody else or just ask for sales or you could even ask for the sales manager. If you straight up say, hey, I have got no luck trying to find out what the discount off MSRP you're gonna give me on a car from your internet sales guys, that's all I wanna know. And you're gonna know in your head what the sticker price is and so you're gonna make sure that you reiterate that with them. Okay, this is the MSRP of this car. How much are you going to give me off of that car before rebates? And I'm not talking about any kind of other military stuff, but that's all rebates. What actual discount are you gonna give me off the car? Okay, so let's say you find that out and they say, okay, well, you know, it's leftover 19, we'll give you five grand off. Great, that's a good starting place, perfect. Um, okay, cool, so now you know they're gonna give you $5,000 off that sticker price, which you're gonna verify. And in your mind, you can be like, okay, great. Well, from the Edmonds forum site, I know that I can get $11,920 off of a 2019 Kia Stinger GT2 rear wheel drive. So in effect, if the MSRP, just for round number's sake, if the MSRP is $50,000 and they're giving me 5,000, so now I'm at 45, and just for round number's sake again, uh, your rebates are $10,000 off. So technically, as of right now, on a piece of paper, they should be able to tell me that my adjusted cap cost is around $35,000 because you've got the $45,000, yet you started at fifty. dollars They give you five off because of your uh, negotiation. So now you're forty five, dollars and now you know that the rebates on that particular model for a lease, whichever lease you calculated, is $10,000. They should be able to sell you that car for $35,000. So at this point, that's the next step. If you get a dealer that works with you and they shoot you the discount off MSRP, perfect. Say, hey man, I'm looking to lease this car and you gotta tell them what you want, uh, the terms and everything, which is what you should have found out from either Edmunds.com or, or the forums. And what I mean by that, if you're doing this lease buyout, which is, on, which is why you're on this video, you've got to for me, the most rebates were on a two-year lease at 24 months, and that's pretty common. So if you're looking for doing the lease buyout and you want the most money off of the car, you're probably gonna be two years, 24 months, at 12,000 miles a year. So you need to tell them that. Hey, you can be upfront with them because they've got the, they're look, at this point, they're looking at the same sheet you are with all the rebates. They can't hide from the rebates. Um, so you're gonna tell them, okay, well, I'm looking to lease it for 24 months at 12,000 miles a year. Can you give me all of that information, the lease payment, the adjusted cap cost? This is when you want to mention that. And, you know, what my, uh, you can just play, you know, like I said, you can just kind of play along with them and say, hey, what's the money factor? What's the residual that you're using? And what's my payment going to be? So, but one of the main things you need to put in there is what's the end cost or adjusted cap cost of the vehicle if they say you know oh well, we can't put that on paper or, oh this doesn't our our uh, desking program doesn't let us do that it's a bunch of crap you can ask them for a detailed lease sheet say hey look we're doing a lot of research i've done this before i want to know what my adjusted cap cost is if you can't tell me tell your sales manager to call me or you call in if they just kind of stop talking to you because sometimes that'll happen you know, you're, you're talking in a lot of terms that a lot, that a lot of salespeople don't even know. And they might just give up because they're just a middleman between the salesperson and they think you're gonna pull their leg. Um, so you might actually have to kind of skip the salesperson sometimes and go to the sales manager. Uh, it's not that uncommon. So let's say that you actually do get this piece of paper uh, that shows the detailed lease agreement and it shows that Yes, you've got $5,000 off MSRP. Yes, you've got your $10,000 in rebates and your adjusted cap cost is $35,000. Well, um, at this point, you can see that the money factor in the residual is what it is. Um, you don't really have to harp on that too much, but what you can do is say, okay, well, the money factor is supposed to be, um, let's just say 0 0.00123, but they've got, 0 0.00159. You can already tell that they're trying to bump the rate on you. It's not the end of the world unless you are doing this to actually lease a Stinger. This video is not for how to <laughs> lease a Stinger, really. It's for how to do the lease buyout. You don't care too much about the money factor and the residual. Yeah, I know there's going to be like a little bit of calculation, I think, for the month, for the first month, 
or the two weeks that you have it, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Anyway, so you've got this on a paper. You can then basically start to get deeper into it. Okay, make sure if this is what you're going to sell me the car at, this is the numbers. And uh, if it's not an official form, they just kind of scribbled something or it doesn't look official, get something official before you go in. Say, hey, is this my buyer's order? And, you know, if they're like, yeah, this is our, this is everything we do, then, I mean, if everything looks good to you and within the specs of what you've researched, you can go in and make the purchase. Now, unfortunately, with my, with my purchase, it didn't exactly go that way. And uh, this is another thing that you won't need to look out for. And I don't know the time of these videos right now, but it might be going into part two of this video. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, I can split it up. So, um, let's say you get in and you meet the salesperson, you go for a test drive, everything is hunky-dory thus far, uh, the car checks out, and you get into the finance office and you start doing the paperwork. One of the main things that you want to just reiterate with the uh, finance manager is, hey, when we get to the buyer's order, I want to check the adjusted cap cost, uh, or they could probably even check it for you there. You want to make sure that the adjusted cap cost is the same number that you talked about before that you got on the sheet of paper, which is the the MSRP discount, which in our scenario was $5,000, and he can show you where the rebates are of $10,000 or whatever they are, which equals you know, your adjusted cap cost of this amount of money. Now, you're gonna have taxes and stuff in there and uh, you know, tag transfer and things like that. Um, you know, you might have the first month's payment, there might be an acquisition fee, things like that that you can negotiate or might not be able to negotiate very well, uh, but just keep an eye out for that. Um, it, those are gonna be in that same section. So one of the main things is you want your adjusted cap cost to be pretty darn close to what you negotiated uh, minus any taxes or acquisition fees. So um, that's the main thing out of this whole document that you wanna see. And uh, in my case, that's not what happened. So I actually got a signed buyer's order um, from a, on a sheet that even I used to do. I used the same program that this dealer did and it said my due on delivery was the number that I wanted. And when I got in, my adjusted cap cost was actually almost $2,000 higher than what it was. Uh, that story is for another day. I'm not going to get into it. We ended up working it out, but it was one of the worst experiences that I've ever had at a, dealer at a dealership. Uh, but those are the things that you need to look out for, and this is why I'm making this video. So let's just say that the rest of it goes smoothly. Um, you sign the paperwork and you drive away in your new Stinger. Congratulations. It's a great car. So now the lease buyout part. So what you want to do is uh, in about 7 to 10, I'd say maybe maybe 10 to 14 days, you'll get a letter from uh, Kia or you'll get an email from Kia. And basically, they're going to tell you uh, that you can go sign up on their website and pay your bill online and a bunch of other things like that. So that's when it's basically registered in Kia's system and you can get your buyout. Now, for Florida buyers, you're actually going to have to go to a dealer to do your buyout. Now, I didn't know this going in. I didn't do enough research, but I really didn't think about that. You know, it's something you don't think about. You see everybody else uh, just, uh, they just say the word buyout. You know, either a lot of people are paying cash, they just pay off Kia Motor Finances. Um, but a lot of people I think are putting loans on the cars because, you know, it's a lot of money that a lot of people might not save up. So you're going to go to, if you're not in Florida, you can go to your own bank and actually get your own financing and have them directly pay off this guy wants some. All right, guys, so at this point, um, if you've got your letter from Kia or your email from Kia and you can set up your account online, uh, normally you can do that, and then there's a spot that you can actually go to see your buyout once you've set up the account. Now, it didn't work for me, and I think the reason being is because I needed to go to a dealer to get my actual payoff number. Um, however, if you can get that number, uh, and it's uh, I think it's under account, uh, and then request payoff. Um, I'll double check for you and put the link in the description uh, as well. Um, but you can just search through a couple of things at the top, and it says request buy out at the bottom. Um, if you are not in Florida, which is probably going to be maybe the, the majority of the people here, I mean, I don't know of any other states that require you to go to a dealer. I don't have that list, um, but it's a state 
law or something like that to where you have to do that. Um, if you don't have to go to a dealer, then basically you can just go get your own financing from any bank. So uh, you might have your own bank or a credit union or whoever it is, uh, PenFed, you can search online. Uh, and basically you just contact them, get yourself approved, say, here's my buyout. Uh, they might ask you for, um, is it a 10-day payoff or what's it good through? Um, I'm not sure if the website would actually tell you that or not, um, since I wasn't able to see it on my side. Uh, if you need that information, then you can just call Kia Motor Finance and they should be able to give you a 10-day payoff or a 15-day payoff, whatever your bank requires. So once you have that, you can basically just go through the financing and the bank that you choose will pay off your lease. Um, when you go to get that number, again, the buyout is going to be basically your adjusted cap cost number that you ended up dealing with. Now, here's the thing you gotta keep in mind, you will be paying taxes, depending on the state that you're in, is how much you're gonna be paying on the vehicle. Technically now, you're buying the vehicle for that amount. So you didn't get charged taxes on the entire purchase when you leased it. Uh, you were only paying taxes every month on the payment uh, and maybe a little bit of sales tax uh, on when you did it or um, what's it called? The registration fees. So you might only be paying registration fees and a little bit of taxes at the time of purchase, but not on the entire uh, purchase of the vehicle, the remaining adjusted cap cost. So you will be paying you know, if it's a substantial amount, 30,000, 40,000, you know, whatever it may be, you're gonna be paying your state sales tax on top of this price. So expect that, keep it in mind, and whatever the bank might charge you to do the loan. Sometimes the banks won't charge anything. They might charge a $100 document fee or document stamp fee or something like that. So just be aware of that. And uh, you're actually good to go at this point. Now for me, it was a little bit different because I had to go to a dealer to do this. Unfortunately for me, I could not go through uh, my bank directly. Uh, in a roundabout way, I ended up going through it, but I had to go to a dealer to do the processing and the paperwork. So I had to call around to a couple dealers and I had to make sure, hey, what's my buyout? Uh, the number did match up to my adjusted cap cost. So at that point I said, okay, well what, you know, you can ask the dealer at that point if you're going to a dealer, okay, well what interest rate can you get me? Um, and then just, you know, know what the rates, what the going rates are at your local bank or, you know, if you uh, Google it or whatever, you can find out online that other people are getting what the current interest rates are going for for the term that you want. So uh, I did find that out and uh, ended up getting um, a local dealer that was about 30 miles away to do it for me. And uh, they had a dealer fee, you know, it was about 500 bucks. And so you have to factor that in. Um, but it was pretty straightforward from there. Um, I was able to use a local credit union that I've actually been banking with since I was 16. So I just went ahead and did it through them because I know that they can't bump the rate. Uh, that's a nice thing about certain credit unions is they don't allow dealers to bump the rate. So I knew the rate I was getting was actually the right rate. Also, I had friends in the business still that verified that yes, that was the rate for that current credit union. So uh, anyway, I went to the dealership and walked into the finance office, signed all the paperwork, and now I have a traditional loan for the adjusted cap cost. So it's a, it's a lot of work, um, but I think for the discount, it's totally worth it. Um, you know, in, in my situation, um, you know, I initially saved, you know, about $18,000 off a sticker. Now, of course, you add in their dealer fees, uh, their addendum, and the taxes that you're gonna end up paying, uh, which you would end up paying anyway if you were buying the vehicle, uh, which are actually lower because you're buying at a lower price. So when you consider the fact that uh, the rebates on a buy for me at the time was about $4,000, and let's just say you got the discount off MSRP, which is gonna be about the same, so you got $9,000 off. Still a good deal, um, but you know, you're paying, still paying you know, 42, 43,000 if the sticker is you know, 52, um, or 53, whatever it may be. So if you got the lease buyout deal, well, you're getting another, you know, total nine, 10, 11, I mean, almost technically for me before it was $11,920 in rebates and then an average of about 5,300 off MSRP. 
So you can see the considerable dis discount. Uh, now that I've been talking so long, I got to do the math in my head. You know, it's about twelve thousand and five thousand. You know, so seventeen and change off of sticker instead of just nine thousand. So that's why everybody's doing it. I don't know why Kia is allowing this loophole, um, but it works out for the public. It's great. I hope a lot more people take advantage of it. Uh, usually, you would have to pay off the remaining amount of your payments. Uh, to some extent and the adjusted cap cost so that's they just kind of forget the rest of your payments and they let you buy it for the adjusted cap cost which is crazy so if you're gonna do this you want to do it as soon as possible uh, that way you're not paying the rent charge or the interest on your payments uh, every month now if you let's say you want to do this and you uh, can't afford to do it right now or can't afford to get the loan right now, which I don't know why it doesn't make sense because 90% of the time buying it out with a traditional loan is going to be better than whatever lease rate they give you. The only, the only other way I could see it working out is if you extend the term and do like a three-year term for, you know, 30 or three years for um, uh, 10,000 miles, like you do a low rate, um, then you might be able to get a decent payment, but your adjusted cap cost is going to be higher because you're not going to be taking advantage of the most rebates. So it is something that you can do a year down the road. You can do it two years down the road. You can do it at the end of the lease if you really want to. It all works out the same. But for the people that are going for the highest discount, you want to do it as soon as it hits Kia Motor Finance. So anyway, there might have been something I missed. There might have been something I didn't explain. I probably over explained it, but that's what I wanted to do because there really wasn't a detailed video out there on how to do this lease buyout and it seems to be a pretty popular thing and I see why if you like the video leave a like if you got any questions which I'm sure you will I'm good at answering them leave a comment below you can follow me on Instagram at the same exact name as my channel Quicksilver09 if you like SRT4s I have a highly modified SRT4 that this channel is pretty much based on now and I've got a lot of car buying advice as well from a few years ago so check out some of those old videos anyway thanks for coming along subscribe See you on the next videos. I got some mods coming up for the Stinger, so you'll want to hang around for those. See you guys.